What's up YouTube, hope you are doing really great, I am finally back with a new series of color grading tutorial in DaVinci Resolve as you guys requested for my latest cinematic music video which I shot using the Sony a7 IV with the S-Log2 picture profile, it had a really kind of moody lighting and I did a cinematic color grading on it and let's dive into the DaVinci Resolve and see what was the process. It was not a heavy color grading and it was really simple so let's go and see what we can achieve. So as you see here I have imported the footage into the DaVinci Resolve and this was shot with Sony a7 IV on 4K 25 frames per second in S-Log 2 picture profile and we have another camera here the B-Cam this was shot on the Sony ZV-E10 in 4K in S-Log 2 but uh, today we are going to show you the color grading process of the main camera which is the Sony a7 IV and it was shot in 10 bit and let's create a timeline using this clip and I will turn off this use project settings and here I will set the color timeline color space to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate because I want to edit and color grade this video in a white gamut zone and this gives you so much capability and you can get the most out of your S-Log2 footage. Let's create the timeline and we go to the color tab and today I want to create eight nodes. Uh, let's uh, create the nodes here. I will press the Alt S now we have eight nodes and I will label them. The first one CST, the second one exposure and white balance. The third one is hue, the fourth tones, the fifth vignette. Here we have sharpen and again the CST node and for the last one film grain. So the first thing I want to set up is the CST node uh, because we want to do the color space transform and work in a DaVinci white gamut zone. So in the effects tab I will search for color space and I will drop it on the CST node and the other CST node also we drop the color space. And I will explain it. Let me show you the first CST node. The, our input color space is S-Log2, so we select the Sony S gamut as it is in your camera in the PP7. If you check it, you will see the Sony S gamut. So our color space for the S-Log2 is S gamut. I will select it. And for the input gamma, I will select the S-Log2. As you see, and don't pay attention to the changes right now, it's not finalized. Now for the output color space, this is not our final output and this is the this is where we are working the timeline. So I will select the DaVinci White Gamut as we select for the timeline settings. I select the DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. And as you see, we have again some changes here. Now it's time to select the last color space transform. And here again, our input color space as you saw is the last thing which we selected here the output DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate so here our input is DaVinci White Gamut and the input gamma is DaVinci Intermediate so again we have some changes now we have to select our output color space this is the final color space which we want to share the video to any social media which is the Rec 709 for TVs, YouTube or any other social media so we select the Rec 709 and the output gamma again Rec 709. Now you see the proper color change here, the color transformation and the video is ready to be color graded. One important thing which I need to mention is that you can also select the color management here and select the timeline color space to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. But as you see here in the latest version of DaVinci Resolve, it says that any modification done here are, will not impact the currently loaded timeline as they are being overridden by timeline settings. That's why because if you set the color settings here it has a higher priority than the project settings so we try to set our color settings here and we do the other jobs here for the rest of the color grading process 
So we go to the second node, the exposure and white balance. I use the HDR tool because it uh, gives you the perfect control like it was done in the camera and it is really natural looking. And the first thing I want to set here is the temperature. I want to make it a little bit colder because it's uh, so much warm, I think. And I will do the tone correction later myself. The first thing I do is always perfecting the white balance to something neutral, which seems neutral to my eye. And as you see, I'm decreasing to around minus 900 and I think this is the neutral white balance for this scene and again I will play with the tint to make it more toward the magenta because I felt that it has some greens in it and after that you can just go and play with the exposure I think this is a little bit overexposed not overexposed but for the scene to be moody and cinematic we need to decrease the exposure and make it a little bit darker and as you see I just just uh, decrease to exposure to minus 35 I think it seems good for me for this scene for a music performance and you can also check your uh, parrots here we have the maximum amount of uh, lighting on the 70 uh, IRE and I think it's good it's on the skin of the model and uh, I want to add a little bit of saturation to make this picture pop I will not add so much saturation for your uh, scene to be cinematic you do not need so much saturation guys you need tones remember that tones are the thing that make your scene so much cinematic and now for the rest of the contrast and saturation settings I go to the primaries and here I want to make the mid-tone detail less so we have a softer skin tone here as you see when I decrease the mid-tone detail the skin of the model becomes softer so I set it on minus around 60 I feel it's good and now I will uh, want to play a little bit with the lift gamma and gain to play with the contrast as you see I added I decreased the lift and made the shadows more contrasty and we can also add a little bit to gamma to bring up the midtones and I think it's good for the exposure and white balance now uh, let's go to the hue for the hue changes I think this yellow color here is not so much pleasing I want to change it towards orange and make it more orangey and it would feel much better in this way so I go to the hue and I will select the curves as you see we have curves here the second tab is hue versus hue I will select these parts and as you see we have a dot here I will increase the distance to make it softer as you see I will reset these and I want to change this dot here which is the yellows and if I decrease it you will see we have brought the wood towards the orange more as you see if we bring it down we make it more greenish and if we bring it up we will take it to towards the orange and as you see it is now much more pleasing if I show you the before and after you see that it becomes much more pleasing and better in the scene now for the next note we have the tones but let me first uh, add the vignette here because I love the vignette it makes your videos and footages really moody and it gives so much depth to the footage I will create a window here and I will make the softness so much around 10 or 11 or 12 that's a number which I always use and I will revert it you will see the mask here we have the mask around the picture and if I invert it we do not have the mask here so here we go to the curves and I will select the custom curves and I will decrease the brightness and as you see this makes the picture so much more moody and I really like the vibe it gives to the video you see how much difference it makes it's just amazing vignette makes a lot of difference now let's go to the tones node and here is where we create our moody tones and what we have in our mind is some moody warm scene and I want to make this scene warmer so we are going to add more red and yellow that's what makes your scene more warmer so I will use the primary bars for this and we have shadows here midtones and highlights and for the shadows I want to make my shadows a little bit warmer so I will increase the reds here and as you see our scene becomes warmer the shadows become warmer and I think it's enough for the shadows I do not want to touch the shadows anymore now for the gamma let me first play with the gain because I want to set the tonality for the face of the model here is the 
most bright part so it would affect the skin of the model the gain slider would mostly affect the skin of the model the guitar and all the parts of the scene which are more brighter so i will increase the red i want to make it warmer the face of the model as you see if i increase the red you see the face becomes much more warmer and pleasing here and for the green i want to decrease it a little bit and we see we have decreased the green in the face and we do not have that greenish tint if i show you the before after of the tones you see it is much more pleasing now the face of the model and i also want to add a, a little bit of a yellow tones to the overall scene to the bright parts which means we should decrease the blues uh, so we add some uh, yellow to the bright parts and I, if i decrease the blue you will see now we have much more yellow in the bright parts and as you see the overall scene is now much more pleasing and warm and we have those warm and pleasing tones here but something at the end which i should mention is that if you want to clean your blacks and make them as you see the blacks are now a little bit reddish and if you want to clean those blacks without touching the overall tone you can go to the lock and here you can decrease the reds and as you see we can clean their black areas now it is much more pleasing again we have the warm in the overall scene and we have also cleaned our blacks which now gives us a much more pleasing scene and if we do a overall before and after you can see how much far we have come till now and uh, the only remaining things are the sharpening and film grain for the sharpening i will uh, go to the sharpen here do the second tab blur sharpen and i want to decrease it and as you see if i decrease it to minus i think 46 is uh, natural you will see picture becomes much more sharper the guitar here and the eyes it's good for the sharpening note and for the last step we go to the film grain and here i will search for the film grain i will drop it and i will select the 35 millimeter 400 t and you can zoom on the picture to see the difference it makes you can make the strange more and i will increase it to around 0.5 and i think it's good now we have the grain the cinematic grain gives so much great mood to the picture it might not be present on the youtube you might not see it but here i am seeing it and it just makes a lot of difference and here is the overall before and after of the picture so that was it for today's tutorial it was really simple and thank you so much for the time you put into watching my tutorial if you have any questions please feel free to ask them in the comment sections i will be really glad to answer them and if you have any suggestions please let me know i will be seeing you in my future videos goodbye